Hey folks, so today I want to go over one of the most challenging things that I have um, kind of been working on, but it's definitely uh, definitely gotten me in the past, um, and it'll kill you if you don't get it right, and ta-da, guess what? It's quoting out a job. I think the hardest thing about quoting is that you have to figure out a reliable way to determine what something's going to cost you before you actually create the first part. So I started out with a really, really vague, um, Excel spreadsheet. Um, you can see it right here. You know, I kind of just have very basic stuff. Um, this was actually kind of going to be to monitor how much money I took in, but it totally didn't work um, because typically what I took in was different than what I quoted and or I had to adjust quotes um, throughout the process to make them kind of fit what I thought the price really should be um, because these numbers weren't really jiving with my gut. Uh, but I started out really basic. Each one of these has a multiplier. So if I say labor or labor hours one, you, you're going to multiply that, get you know 20 bucks an hour or whatever. Um, you know materials. I think uh, I was just basically plugging them in one cell at a time. Each line would have been a different quote. Um, you can see that there's a lot more that goes into each one of these categories than just. Um, one little number there. So that's what kind of got me. Um, sometimes if I reworked a quote, it could be, you know, 20 or 30 percent different than the first time, um, just if I had changed one little factor. And so that's what drove me eventually. This is about a year old now. Um, I started working with this system. Um, I've been kind of tweaking it. I just made some pretty big changes to it just the other day. But yeah, this is what I've been using. It kind of expands on, I think those are pretty much the same categories. So materials, instead of just saying materials, I've got, at this point, um, money to for gas to go pick up the stuff, labor for my time to go drive to go pick it up. Um, you know, if I order it online, I've got a shipping price built in. The actual material, now I didn't just say materials anymore, even when I'm talking about the actual materials. I went ahead and I broke it down materials for the part, materials for, you know, if I've got to put some type of spoil board or something else under the part so I don't cut into my table. Um, so material for under the part, material for a fixture plate, if I need to make like some type of fixture. Miscellaneous hardware, that one's gotten me before where, you know, you quote this thing out and then, you know, it's not a big deal but it all adds up. Um, you got to go buy a bag of screws for your fixtures and that's 10 bucks for a bag of screws. Well now I've got miscellaneous hardware in there. Um, Monster Jaws, that's the brand name. Um, I believe, yeah, this number here, 155.36 divided by 10, that's exactly the price that I paid when I ordered 10 Monster Jaws. So divide that by 10, I just pass that cost directly to the person. If I have to use a set of Monster Jaws, guess what? It's going to be 1631. Um, that way it's, it's exact. Um, material for Soft Jaws, uh, I think the unit price there, that's going to adjust with the cost of aluminum, but that's just for one by two extruded aluminum um, by the foot, I think, at the time is what that's in there. If I were to quote that out, I would just look up one by two aluminum and charge them for that much material. Um, cut fees, you can't forget about cut fees. That'll, that'll get you, especially if you've got you know eight pieces of aluminum to be cut, depending on the, the place you're getting your metal from. Some of them charge per cut. Um, my local place is pretty good where... If it's um, extruded um, tubing or extruded bar, they'll charge you like five bucks for the first cut and then a dollar after that. So instead of a $35 um, cut bill for seven cuts, it's like 12 bucks. So they're really good about that. Um, so that's kind of what I have right now encompassing my material costs. So then I sum all those up at the bottom and then I add a 5% cushion. Um, the cushion, it's kind of a toss up. It's, you know, sometimes the price list that you're looking at, especially the local supplier, it might be a little bit out of date. And right now the metals market has been pretty volatile. So uh, it's kind of to, to cushion the volatility of the market as well as if I screwed up something in this quote, you know, 5%, um, you're talking from 67 to 70 bucks. So it's really not a big difference, but it can help you out a little bit. Uh, so that's materials. Um, set up right now, I just got CAD and CAM, um, 25 bucks an hour for that work. And one thing to note here is I know that I'm not the most proficient with CAD and CAM right now. 
So a lot of times I will bid these out. My standard, if it's a fairly simple part, is I, and they're sending me the CAD, so I really just need to import it into Fusion. Um, develop a toolpath is typically an hour. Um, if it's more than that, or if they're asking me to modify a design or do anything like that, then that's where you start charging CAD work by the hour. Um, and I try to bid these a lot lower. Honestly, I probably bid these about 50% of the time it actually takes me except for the cam. Typically, if it's a simple part, I can knock out a toolpath using Fusion's templates. Um, CAD works a little bit different. I still, you know, take a little while. You kind of, it's so iterative to me where I'll make a change and I won't like that change or I'll adjust it and keep going back and forth until it's perfect. So CAD can take a lot longer. I think I quote that out about 50% of what I, time it actually takes me. Um, so once we get it, everything ready to go on the machine we kind of go into this tab or this um, box here I guess um, right now like I've got it broken out you know you got to cut your material to size so that's the bandsaw or if you're just you know drilling holes if it's um, you got to drill the material the rough material before it goes onto the mill um, things like that you know drill press labor these are like these are hourly so ten bucks an hour um, and not you don't have to put a whole number in here, put 0.2 if it's going to be 15 minutes or, or 0.25 if it's going to be 15 minutes, you know, whatever. Whatever's fair. Um, Tormach use and labor is broken out. So if I put something on my Tormach, the labor part right here, I'm going to charge them for probably about half an hour to an hour for setup. And that kind of depends on how much setup it really is. If it's putting a square piece in a vise, then yeah, less than half an hour probably. Um, I might have to sweep the vise or, or put the vise on the table. But if it's uh, something where I've got to mount several different things, say I need to make a fixture plate, um, that's gonna be mostly labor and it's gonna be um, typically a couple different operations. So that's gonna go up hour, hour and a half, some, somewhere around there just to get the setup done. Um, and I should mention, I'm actually thinking next time I'm going to break like labor out into setup, tool changes, that sort of thing, or part changes. Because right now I don't have a tool changer, so I go out there every time it's done and, and change tools and let it run again. Uh, but yeah, this labor is strictly when I'm out there with the mill. Um, Tormach mill use, now there's a lot of runs that I've been able to do where I can put 28 parts on the table and hit go, and that thing will run for two hours unattended. Uh, and small cutters and, and everything else, and it's a reliable setup that I've run before, so I feel comfortable walking away from the machine. I'm gonna bill them for two hours of that, and I'm not gonna bill them for labor there, you know? So I'll, I'll get them for the setup and the um, tool changes and, and all that, and kind of come up with a, a number for labor, but then when the machine, if it's gonna run for 30 hours, um, just the time that it's actually running and I'm not standing there watching it, well, they're going to get billed and right now I'm charging 20 bucks an hour to run my machine for it to run by itself, lights out. So uh, another thing is tapping. Uh, if I'm tapping holes, guess what? I hate tapping holes, so I'm charging full price labor on that one. Um, I do recognize at some point that I could probably get some type of a nice like tapping arm or get the Tormach to tap holes. So. Um, there is some wiggle room there if I'm looking at a quote that I'm making and it's super high and that's one of the main driving things like well I might ease up on it and at that point it's how bad do you want the job I'm uh, you know one man shop and this isn't my full time job I have a full time job that supports my family and me so if I don't want to tap a bunch of holes then I'll leave it there and if they're willing to pay me what I want to do it then I'll take it um, if they're not, then they can find someone else that wants to do it or that has the better equipment that can knock them out um, a lot cheaper and easier. Finishing. Finishing the work right now, I'm contemplating what I need to do here because, for example, I just finished an order yesterday and I thought I was good to go. All of them came off the mill and I actually used the same strategy from the last video that I did where I just left, I left seven thou on the bottom of the part. Um, instead of doing little tabs here and there, I just left a solid seven thou around the entire bottom of the part that I didn't cut and I was able to break the pieces out you know just like normal and then it just left that little tiny ridge and just even using like a deburring tool you know it would clean it up after it would take me like a minute or two per part and then I typically would take a piece of sandpaper because the deburring tool I don't know if mine's getting dull or what but it wouldn't leave a, a nice clean ed edge it would kind of just leave kind of a, a rough edge still and so I was looking at a few minutes apart there, times 30 parts was what the order was for. 
You know, so it, it equated to a few hours worth of work there. Um, so I don't know if I need to break this out to really account for that because I didn't even charge them finishing on it. I didn't think it was gonna be a big deal at all. And so I pretty much ate that time. Um, once again, when you're a small uh, side business, basically, it's not that big of a deal. I just came inside, sat on the couch and watched some TV and knocked them out. But if this was, I was paying someone on the clock and it took them three, four hours to, to sit here and sand little pieces and I didn't bill it for a quote, I just ate you know, a couple hundred dollars worth of labor. That's a big deal. So I need to work on that, figure out how to probably do it better, not to charge more, but uh, how to do it better. Anyway, off, off the tangent here. So machining, um, next box is shipping. So typically I just go, I, I ship a lot of stuff USPS. Um, if not, then I go FedEx, but grab your postage rate. Um, don't forget insurance. If you've got a you know, I just shipped a box for $1,800. Guess what? Insurance was 30 some dollars on a flat rate box to ship it. <laughs> so the total came out to like $43 just in postage. Um, and I have been burned with that in the past where on that old spreadsheet where I've just got, you know, shipping, you know, actually, yeah, there it is, shipping. I'd throw, you know, the flat rate, large flat rate box, 18 bucks. Click, throw it in there. I'm good. I'm covered, right? Well, then I'd get to the post office and it would be 30 or 40. Well, guess what? I didn't account for that and that, that just ate into my profits. So now I've kind of the whole theme here. I've broken that out. I've got insurance now. Next thing that got me was I went to Office Depot and spent like $30 on packing supplies. So now I need to go back to my Office Depot receipt and figure out how much I spent on boxes there. Um, right now I just bought one size, a fairly small box that fits pretty much everything I make. Um, so I'll plug that in there. But if I start having four or five different sizes of boxes, I'll probably break this out by size. And then, you know, if you need, if I'm going to ship it one box, I can do quantities, I can do prices. Same thing with, um, like I bought packing paper. You can break that down by the foot and go, you know, it don't have to be perfect, but oh yeah, I think I'm going to probably use three feet of that when I pack this thing up, plug a three in right here, you know? Um, same with tape, um, same exact thing by the foot. If you're taping up boxes, um, I did the latest thing I bought was packing slip envelopes. Cause one of my, um, customers is particular and wants a packing slip on the outside of the box. So, you know, a box of a hundred of them was 1179 divide that by a hundred. That means you're spending oh, almost 12 cents a piece for them. So when I work that into the quote, they get charged an extra 12 cents. I'm not making any money off of it, but at least it's incorporated in there. It's a pass through. Um, expense. Um, I've just added like travel. That's probably going to be some type of a little bit of a labor and gas that needs to be calculated because right now, this year I've been bad about tracking expenses when it comes to travel. Um, I've been good about all my purchases. I have every receipt. I've got everything in a spreadsheet. But as far as travel, I mean, you've got, for tax purposes, you can claim a decent deduction there and I haven't tracked anything. I've got like five vehicles, so it's such a pain in the butt. It seems like I'm always driving something different. Um, so for 2019, that is one of my big pushes is I'm going to track my travel. Um, and I guess I'm going off on a tangent again, but mainly work that into my quotes and everything a little bit better. Um, poly bags, I've started really focusing on individually wrapping uh, parts. And so poly bags are good for that um, for different sizes. I'm planning on just having a few here and then however many parts need to be in a bag, you know, charge them for that accordingly. Over here I had tooling, but it, everything was always a guess. I've only been solidly in business for 2018, a little bit in 2017, but I haven't had enough tool wear or a good enough way to track it, a good enough volume of parts being made or anything to really know if it's my machining, um, like if I'm working tools too hard or if a lot of tools that were, I was just breaking because I'm new, <laughs> pushing them too hard or messing up on the soft, on the cam software and that sort of thing. So then that kind of negates any type of tracking that you're doing. So I decided instead of trying to guess on every order, which typically it was pretty much 20 bucks I'd throw on there on a decent sized order. I decided just to roll that into my overhead fee. So that kind of brings us to the summary here, but before I get there, I'll just kind of sum up here. So I've got all these now four categories. I used to have tooling up there, but these four categories here, I consider my direct costs. These are costs that are going to be directly charged to the customer on the quote. So from there, I sum all those up. Those are my direct costs right there. 
Um, guess what? Free quotes aren't free, folks. I throw a labor charge for an hour to make a quote, I think is more than fair. And guess what? Typically I make two or three quotes before I get a job. And so really I'm eating two, two, three hours of work. So I'm going to charge it, you know, a one right there. Boom. $25 is going to get rolled into overhead. The customer is not going to see quote charge on their quote because they'd go, what the heck? But yeah, that's definitely an overhead charge. Um, so yeah, direct costs, make the quote cost money overhead charge. So this is everything that I don't directly or that doesn't fit into these direct costs. I'll say that. So tooling is a big one now. Um, everything from business license fees, you know, I got to renew my business license every year. Um, let's see what else there's county taxes that aren't directly billed to the customer or accounted for in the self-employment or income tax down below. There's gas to go pick things up. There's, you know, the list goes on. I've actually, it might be easier just to go to this spreadsheet here. Um, so what I did was I highlighted yellow and green are the different overheads. So yeah, I've got a propane heater in my garage. Guess what? It needs propane. Um, my websites, uh, URLs that cost 12 bucks a year. Um, sandpaper, end mills, end mills, drill bits, mighty bike clamps. You know, I, I needed 28 of them at once. So there went 60 bucks, but guess what? They're reusable. It's not really fair to charge a customer $60 in clamps. Um, same thing. Think about a $600 vice. If I needed a vice, I'm not going to put that on a quote for one customer to pay, to pay. I'm going to use that for the next decade. So end mills, WD 40, all your consumables, advertising, uh, business cards, more propane, all this stuff is what my, my overhead was for last year. And so what I did to come up with this number, the 15% was I took all that overhead, I summed it up, and then I divided it by my total income. And it came out to about 15%, I think. I don't know, it's been a few weeks. I, it either came out to 15%, that's what I went with, or I might have adjusted that because I don't really have a lot of data on... Um, on my business yet. So last year being the first year I had to buy a ton of stuff. So that may be high. I'll have to go back and relook at that and make sure that I've got it right. Um, because I don't want to be overcharging people and losing jobs because of it. So from there I sum it up and then I add self-employment tax. That's your social security and Medicare. Boom. 15.3% <laughs> income tax. Um, I just threw in 15%. Um, a lot of that is because of my I'm a sole proprietor, so all this income gets fed into my normal tax return. And uh, so I, I think I'm right around the 15% tax bracket at this point. So anything that gets charged here, I need to cover that tax. So sum it up again, boom. If I have, I'm in Utah, so tax rate is 7.1%. So if I sell to a Utah person, I have to account for that. So otherwise I just zero that out. Um, PayPal, if they're paying online, typically it's one or the other. I'm either dealing with someone local, which has only happened once, but then I have to charge sales tax. If not, they're online and I'm charging through PayPal. You got to add that PayPal fee in. PayPal's 2.9% plus 30 cents per transaction. So that's kind of how I come up with my total cost. Boom, right there. So this imaginary job here would be, you know, 4, 468. Uh, I've kind of started experimenting. I don't right now pay for power. I, it's just as the household utilities. So I've kind of started brainstorming over here, you know, okay, these are the things that are taking power. Lights or LEDs, they're almost nothing. The air compressor and the mill are the two that I'm kind of trying to brainstorm and figure out what the best way is to charge for that or account for that. Um, all this other stuff, I've been looking more in the frame of taxes and these are possible tax write-offs if I can figure out how to legally do that. I know there's home business exemptions and there's stipulations about having to have um, places of your house that are solely for work purposes and that sort of thing. So I got to read up on that and make sure that I meet, make sure that I meet all of the uh, stipulations and I'm doing it legitimately. 
So that is kind of how I quote things out. Some of the gotchas, I kind of alluded to it, but um, the biggest gotchas, the things that I paid money for, and I was like, man, I need to fix that on the quote, would definitely be pickup fee for gas and labor on materials. The best place to get materials is an hour drive each way from where I'm at. So that, that really comes up to about, you know, for labor, about 50 bucks, two hours to go up there and back, and then gas about 20 bucks. So it sounds crazy, but they are more affordable than anywhere online. So typically this amount of money, it typically the overall price comes in cheaper if I go and pick it up from them than if I order it online. So it's still fair and really, I mean, I like driving. So, so taking two hours to go drive and making $25 an hour to do it isn't bad. Um, let's see, what other gotchas do we have? I uh, kind of alluded to it before, if you just say materials and you're just thinking about the part, that'll kill you because you've got all sorts of other materials that typically get, get used. Um, finishing is the one that's been killing me, killed me on the last job. And then postage, the insurance really, really will hurt if you plan on insuring your packages and don't think about it until you go to ship. So once this is all done, I don't know if I'm sharing too much or too little with the customer, but this all feeds into this next tab here. It's a customer copy. And so I've kind of got, you know, just the normal thing, work estimate, prepared by me, prepared for the customer, any type of notes that I need to plug in there. Uh, and then I just let them know, you know, this is the, the amount of CAD work I'm going to be doing. This is what I'm charging to cut your material. This is what I'm charging for my machine to run. This is the overhead and this is the cost of materials, you know, shipping, subtotal, tax if applicable, and then boom, final total. And that's that up here as well. So I've done that, nobody's complained, nobody's come back to me and tried to pick apart my quote. Um, overhead now is a decent chunk of the total, so I'm kind of wondering if someone will ask me, hey, what's that huge overhead fee? But I can definitely explain that, especially when 30% of the final price goes to taxes, federal taxes, no less. Uh, I think that's easily justifiable. So that is how I'm quoting my jobs. I hope this helps. Um, if you have any suggestions on things I could do better on this, um, definitely let me know because like I said in the beginning, this is the one of the biggest things that I struggle with. So let me know. I look forward to hearing from you and thanks for watching.